Hello world, my name is Tim Rosswick and welcome to the Dev Report where I go over everything that happened in game dev last week. This week we got some crazy news that everybody was freaking out over, but I got the scoop just for you. That and so much more right here. Let's get into it. So first up, game dev's biggest controversy this week, Unity revoking Improbable's license for Spatial OS. If you don't know what Spatial OS is, it's an online service that helps you make multiplayer games faster in Unity. In fact, we have a we have an ad right here on the screen for them. What developers thought this meant was that they have to cease working on all of their projects right now that use Spatial OS. Everything that they were working on for years or months had to be stopped. But Unity responded very shortly after that with a blog post on why you can keep working on your Spatial OS game. And I think it's best summarized by Reddit user Lori Trilink. And they say, running a Unity instance in the cloud to support your own game is allowed. Running a Unity instance in the cloud to support multi-tenant managed services is allowed. A lot of people were suspicious of Unity for terminating a license to something that could be a competing product. So to summarize, if you're working on a Spatial OS game, it's all good. But keep in mind that anybody can pull this license shit at any time and you need to be careful about the tools you use. That being said, while this debacle was going down, Epic and Improbable started a fun to lure devs away from Unity, a mid-engine kerfluffle. Kerfluffle. Ker kerf Kerfuffle? Did I say kerfluffle? The goal here was to assist developers who are left in limbo by the new engine and service incompatibilities that were introduced with the Unity Kerfuffle. This fund is $25 million and it's gonna go to help indies transition from what I guess is Unity. This seems like a direct shot at Unity. This is a $25 million fund just to help people move away from Unity. If you want more details on that, click the link down below, but you might want to get in on this. I mean, who doesn't like money for their indie game? In news that seems like it's competing with the previous news, but it's not actually because it happened before the kerfuffle. Unity opens a $25,000 contest for devs that make games with meaning or meaningful impact. Of course, terms and conditions always apply to this kind of thing, so I recommend you check out the details down below if you're interested in possibly competing, but it's cool to look at. A lot of indie games have meaningful impact to them, right? So why not take a look? And then we got a report that Amazon is developing its own game streaming service. Interesting. I think game streaming might be the, uh, the next frontier. I don't think anybody's proven the business model yet like Netflix has proven it for movies, but if it works out, it could be kind of cool. It could be a new revenue strategy for indie devs. And then we had Epic Games alter their refund policy to match Steam for their Epic Store, which basically means that any user can return a game they played for less than two hours within 14 days of purchase. But since they don't have a system in place, they want users to apply through their player support while they work on a solution, which is kind of, you know, okay, they're moving fast, they're breaking things. And for them, I don't know if this is good or bad though. I'll have to wait and see. And in what seems like AAA news, but is actually indie news, Division 2 is skipping Steam in favor of Epic Store. The reason why this is indie news is because AAA games moving to a store like Epic Store could be fantastic for people that publish on that platform. We don't know the details behind it, we don't know if they're paid, we don't know any of that, but it's it's good to see that AAA games might not just be choosing Steam or their massive publisher launcher or their launch title. Then an interesting little tidbit that I found, the Dark developer said that he rejected 12 offers from major publishers to make the game the way they wanted it to be. Nice to see that indies still have that sense of pride and accomplishment in their work. They don't want to sell out 100% completely. And then GitHub, which is now owned by Microsoft, offering free, unlimited, private repos. This is a big move. A lot of people moved away from GitHub when it was acquired by Microsoft. They were scared Microsoft was going to steal their code. I don't really know. I didn't look too much in the situation. Now with free unlimited private repos, it means that anybody can source control their own code without having it available to the public. Might be an option for some people. And then in something that is completely anecdotal and under no circumstances should be taken as the standard, the Planetary Annihilation dev said that Linux users were only 0.1% of their sales but 20% of crashes and tickets. If you're familiar with the 80-20 rule, this usually happens with everything. A small percentage of your users is usually the vast majority of your problems. I'm not saying you shouldn't publish to Linux. I'm not saying Linux is bad. I'm not saying Linux breaks your game. I'm saying it's interesting to see a real world account of the 80-20 rule kind of in action. And it might be worth thinking about whether multiple platforms is actually worth your time and investment. We found out that Construct 3 will be completely open and free for the weekend of Global Game Jam 2019. If you want to use Construct 3, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, you can, you can use it. I use Construct 2 though. And then in this week's content drop, we got another video from Mark Brown on the year stealth games got serious. I'm a big fan of Game Maker's Toolkit and I recommend you give this one a watch. And we got a video from Ars Technica on how Dead Space's scariest scene almost killed the production of the game. This is a good watch and I recommend you uh, check it out. And last but not least, we have all of these beautiful people in the Game Dev Underground Discord 
who promoted their stuff, who wanted to talk about the games that they're making, who wanted to show people all the cool stuff that they're doing right now as we speak. They're actually getting shit done. So if you want to get shit done just like these people and you want to promote your stuff and have other people see it, maybe even end up in this video, hit the Discord link down below and you can be a part of it. But that's it for the Dev Report this week. My name is Tim Roswick and I will see you again next week.